In this video, we're going to cover Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6E, what it is and whether you should upgrade or not. Stay tuned. Welcome back to another tech control video here. If you're new, make sure to hit that big red subscribe button, share with a buddy or two and comment below. So Wi-Fi 6, what is it? Wi-Fi 6 is the latest of the 802.11 standard. 802.11 is the designation that the IEEE assign all local area networks. And the Wi-Fi is actually the 11th standard in this 802 configuration. That's why it's called 802.11. So 802.11 is actually a WLAN, a wireless local area network. So whenever you hear 802.11, you immediately should think of Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi 6 is still in its infancy. We are still coming off of 802.11 AC, which is the previous generation, but there were more before that. Let's talk about that real quick. Initially, there was just 802.11, which was the first Wi-Fi. So it doesn't really have a generation name. Let's just call that generation zero because the following one, 802.11b, is actually the first generation. 802.11a is actually generation two. It's weird that they would go from nothing to B. Well, that little bit makes sense. But then they went back to A, I guess because there wasn't one to begin with. So now we have gen zero, gen two, uh, I'm sorry, gen zero, gen one is B, and then gen two is A. A little confusing, but after that we got uh, the third generation, which is actually 802.11G. Fun fact, that's actually the first router I ever had was a Linksys G router. So one thing to know is that 802.11, B, A, and G, they were all backwards compatible. And up to this point, they didn't actually have the term generation in their name. It was just 802.11, nothing, A, B, G, or sometimes it just said G router and you already knew that it was backwards compatible. Another thing to note is that the first generation 802.11, also A and G, those operated on a 2.4 frequency. So after that came 802.11N. Now this one is interesting because it came with the ability, the, the higher end routers anyway, they came with the ability to have a dual band. Uh, frequency, which basically meant on one band of the router, you can shoot out a two gigahertz signal, which was basically the G signal or the N at a 2.4, or on the second band, you could hit the higher frequency, the five gigahertz frequency. And again, these high end routers were able to support both bands, even though at the time there really weren't many N capable devices. 802.11 AC is the next generation that hit us with Again, the higher end models hit us with a tri-band router. And again, what this did was one band was a 2.4, a second band was at the five gigahertz, and it now also had a third band that could transmit a signal also at the five gigahertz signal. So what's the difference between the 2.4 gigahertz band and the 5.0 gigahertz band? Well, the 2.4 is actually a little bit uh, slower than the five, that makes sense but it has more range. The five gigahertz band doesn't have as much range, but it is a lot faster and it's able to handle more devices at the same time. Of course, technology doesn't stand still. So what's after 802.11 AC? Well, it's 802.11 AX. I think we can all agree that 802.11 AX is quite a mouthful. So for marketing purposes, this got renamed to Wi-Fi 6. Why Wi-Fi 6? Well, it's the sixth generation. The FCC just passed a vote to free up the six gigahertz space. So now Wi-Fi 6E is introduced. E stands for expanded. So what do I mean by marketable? You can see this logo on directly on the package and not only just of routers, but also router Wi-Fi compatible devices. This is the old logo. Let me not say old. This is the generation five and previous logo. This is the generation six logo. Why is Wi-Fi six even needed? Let's take a step back and let's talk about Wi-Fi five. Wi-Fi five was specifically designed to send data to multiple places at the same time. 
And the way it distributes this data is with binary code, ones and zeros, via quadruple amplitude modulation, or QAM. Some people call it QAM. I've also heard it pronounced CAM. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it correctly, so instead I'm just going to call it by its acronym QAM. Wi-Fi 5 distributes the signal via eight digits of binary code, or 256 QAM. Wi-Fi 6 now has 10 digits of binary code for a whopping 1024 QAM. So the difference of binary code between 8 and 10 really doesn't sound like much, but it is a 30% increase. So now with this 30% increase, your speeds are a lot higher than they were before, and also your multitasking is way better. So the best way to look at this is as if each one of your devices is a car and the highway is Wi-Fi 5, let's say. So it has quite a number of lanes, but Wi-Fi 6 just adds a few more lanes and all your cars or devices are able to roam through the freeway more freely. No pun intended. Now Wi-Fi 6E expands the network from a 2.4 gigahertz, also a 5.0, all the way up to 6.0. This is the first time that a router is able to operate on all three Wi-Fi bands. So don't quote me on this one. It might be a little early to even say, but I wouldn't be surprised if in the future there is no more 2.4 gigahertz band. So when are routers with Wi-Fi 6E coming out? Well, they're actually coming out at the end of this year, 2020. However, with everything that's going on in the world, I really wouldn't be surprised if this gets delayed to early 2021. Speaking of 2021, that is when we'll start to see compatible devices with Wi-Fi 6E. So now that Wi-Fi 6 is becoming more widely available, does that mean that you should just throw out your router and go buy a Wi-Fi 6 router? Well, no, again, because Wi-Fi 6E is still coming out. It's very early in its infancy. So besides compatibility, that aside, you really have to worry about price. These new routers, Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E that are coming out later this year, they're gonna be through the roof in pricing. For those of you on a budget, it may not be a bad time to pick up a 802.11 AC router now, which is Gen 5. Those you can find uh, pretty inexpensively compared to what they were even two years ago. I guess if you're not on a budget and you have the money to spare, go ahead and get a Wi-Fi 6 router. But with Wi-Fi 6E coming out right around the corner, you would just be re-upgrading again. I mean, I guess if that's what you want to do, go ahead. Another train of thought is you could pick up a Wi-Fi 6 router now, and then in a couple of years when Wi-Fi 6E is more widely available, then you can upgrade again. But again, we're, we're talking about um, a price tag that's pretty up there. That's the way it goes with all new technology. When it's in its infancy, it's pretty expensive. So for those of you at home that have a modem and router built in like a two-in-one, and you're not sure what type it is, you can always call up your internet service provider, Optimum, Verizon, you know, whoever it is, and ask them, what type of router do I have in my home? And are there any upgrade options available? Usually there are, and they're more than happy to help you, but at a cost. So the question of the video is, what router do you have currently? And are you going to upgrade to Wi-Fi 6 or wait for Wi-Fi 6E routers to become more widely available and at a cheaper price. Let me know your thoughts, comment below, sub to this channel, share with a buddy or two, and stay tuned for more. We're gonna keep it coming. If you like VR, I encourage you to go subscribe to our sister channel, Gubs. Right now they're playing a horror game and it's actually pretty funny. I'll leave a link in the description. Go check it out.